Smart materials are layer structures that you can apply to any model you import and it will be, uh, it will be generated properly based on some uh, mask uh, generators that will look at uh, your baked textures for instance the uh, world space normal, emit occlusion, curvature and position map and uh, because uh, the parameters or the mask are based on these uh, images you can apply it to any uh, model you make and uh, based on its own uh, uh, images or textures it will be applied correctly you have to follow a or uh, there are many ways to structure it but uh, this is how I structure it which is based on how uh, these are also structured so uh, let's start at the beginning First off, you make a new folder. This will be the master folder. Uh, the smart material material will uh, take the name from the top folder. So let's name it later. Make a new fill layer. Add it within. This will be the base color uh, layer. It will only affect the color of the material. So you can set it to something else. And. Uh, I know the entire model will be uh, metallic, so I can also just utilize this layer to make uh, the entire mesh completely metallic. And uh, I'm gonna add a new folder, add it within. You uh, structure folder within folders because uh, if you apply the smart material to a mesh later uh, and you only want it to affect a certain part of the mesh, you can add a mask to the top layer and uh, assign it like this but uh, if you only want uh, some certain folders to affect a certain uh, portion of the object you can uh, for instance uh, do like this so uh, now this flare, fill layer only affects uh, the um, uh, uh, this fill layer can only affect uh, whatsoever, whatever is uh, masked within this one and whatever is within this folder can only affect what is uh, within this mask so if I uh, were to add a new folder place it under so, oops, make a new fill layer place it within the folder 3 change the color to red you can see now uh, it is passed through the hierarchy down to this folder uh, so uh, structuring within folders can be uh, very nice to do so this is the roughness folder and I will make a base roughness um, layer here I will uncheck all the channels so that this uh, will not uh, affect. So uh, what this will do is, uh, whenever I make a uh, new fill layer and apply a mask to it up here, uh, uh, whatever is black within this mask will be ignored at this level and it will fall back to the base roughness. So. Uh, Let's uh, disable these channels and uh, select the mask um, icon here and choose add generator and uh, at this uh, icon you can find the MG mask builder and uh, what it will do is uh, it will fetch your baked uh, textures from before such as the world space normal, ambient occlusion, curvature and position and based on those it will uh, apply some grunge uh, texture to your surface so uh, what happens now is uh, whatever is white on these, uh, this mask will uh, get applied the roughness value of 0.6 and whatever is black as you can see the tiny fields here are black it will fall back down to the base roughness value down here you can also apply as many MG masks uh, builder as you want. You can right click, choose add generator again, generator. And uh, but uh, as we notice, uh, maybe uh, if 
I were to disable this, you can know this uh, right here that uh, when I apply this mask, uh, the effect of this mask builder disappears. That is because the blend node is by default set to normal, which means uh, the black and uh, white values within this uh, the texture that this makes is uh, uh, kept. Uh, so if I just want to keep the white values that are based on this one and ignore the black values I can set it to screen blend mode and I can see uh, the white values are uh, passed up or down or whatever so um, now I can apply as many mask builders as I want you can also use your own custom grunge uh, colors here you can go up to the grunge menu and choose uh, use custom grunge. Put it to on. You can see everything disappears because we don't have anything connected to the custom grunge uh, slots. So I can uh, go down here and use the, for instance, the sum or uh, let's find a cloud. Cloud 2. And uh, let's find a sum again. And now let's increase the color. It's kind of hard to see. And uh, you can adjust levels here and the grunge parameter to get a bit more effect out of it. Out of it. So uh, you can go into uh, the grunge here and uh, adjust the second grunge. Uh, Secondary grunge, uh, custom grunge channel, and uh, you can just experiment. It's kind of hard to predict how it will look, uh, so you should just uh, play around with it. That's how you uh, find some interesting stuff. I think I can do something with this. Let's. Uh, I don't think I want the AO to be that effective, so I can turn on the AO. And now you have some... Uh, like when I notice steam on metal, these are usually the... It kind of looks like it has been close to a hot and moist surface, which is kind of strange, but uh, let's just go with it. We can add as many as you want, so uh, let's just continue. Add a new generator. And... Uh, once again, add this to screen. So we just keep the white values. We can also add scratches to the texture. You have a scratches uh, parameter here. So if you increase it, you can see uh, you get some uh, scratches across the texture. I think it's a good habit to add a new folder for each function the texture will have. So if I will make a some sort of damaged effect on the texture, I will usually make a new folder for it. So I can easily disable the function later. So if I uh, I only want this to affect the uh, the bumpiness of the surface, so I can decrease it a little bit and add a new black. A mask and a generator to it. Do the exact same technique as before. A combination of custom grunge that I have become quite fond of is uh, the combination of a cloud 2 and a creased. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you get a uh, really nice uh, effect from this, I think. And uh, if it's not deep enough for you, you can go back to the fill layer itself and uh, adjust the height of it. 
You can also uh, enable the uh, color channel and then take it down to black so you get a uh, black value of the color or black uh, color value wherever this texture has effect which I think looks nice on uh, metallic surfaces and you can just further play with the um, with, uh, values here So uh, when you get something that you like, remember to uh, rename the layers to something that's understandable in case you uh, don't use it for a while and uh, forget how it's structured. You can easily tell by the layer uh, names what it does. Or if you want to share it on uh, Substance Share website, for instance, it's uh, nice for people to understand what the folders are for and uh, what the fill layers does. So uh, the top name, the folder top folder name is uh, the name that uh, Substance will use for uh, uh, the smart materials down here. So name it something uh, that you uh, will uh, recognize. So let's call this um, uh, Pumpy Hold Scratched. How do you write Scratched? Scratched uh, metal. <laughs> right click this and choose create uh, smart material. You will see it pops up here. And to see if it works, we can just uh, minimize and uh, disable this one and drag it in. You can see we have the exact same uh, texture generated uh, because um, it, uh, it generates the mask. Uh, based on the exact same parameters on the MG mask filler. We can uh, see how it looks on a uh, sample model. Check it in. Oops. And it's not so bad. You can increase uh, the quality of the shader parameter to get a slightly better look. And uh, if you don't like this, uh, you can go back into uh, whichever texture and uh, adjust it here. If I don't like the <laughs> scratches on the bumpy material or bumpy texture, I can simply go back and uh, Tune it down or up, and um, if you like this better, you can still keep this one. You can uh, just right-click and create a new smart material, and it will be iterated beside it, so you don't uh, lose anything. You can drag in, drag in the old one, and uh, so it's really easy and uh, quick to uh, iterate on a smart material. You can uh, inherit from an existing one and uh, iterate and improve it to your liking and uh, easily, you can easily save it. So uh, smart materials are a really powerful feature. It's uh, It will drastically improve your uh, work speed or uh, workflow. And that's pretty much it. <laughs>